I'm a backyard chicken educator, and I'm here to tell you that chickens can save the world. <laughs> it's extraordinary how much the chicken is intertwined into our experience as human beings. I mean, can you even remember a time when you didn't know about chickens? Chicken might have been one of your very first words. The first toy you ever played with likely had a chicken on it, was a chicken stuffy, or made some variation of a cluck, a balk, or a cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> Chickens are even part of our everyday language. You ever feel cooped up? At the bottom of the pecking order? Maybe one day you got a little wild and actually flew the coop and someone was like, hey man, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And you were like, you know what? I'm just trying to come out of my shell. <laughs> Chickens. <laughs> And that's just in our culture. Chickens have permeated cultures throughout history, from ancient pottery, to religious art, to your grandmother's kitchen. <laughs> Chickens are everywhere. And there's something oddly comforting about the image of the chicken. I think it's because chickens are one of our common denominators, which is a really good thing. Because right now, when we're so divided, we kind of need all the common denominators we can get. With over 25 billion chickens existing in the world, maybe taking a look at how they've basically managed to make themselves a part of all of our lives, we could find the humanity in each other. So, let's start at the beginning. Long, long ago, in the jungles of Asia, there lived a bird with striking plumage and an assertive personality. This bird was called Red Jungle Fowl. And it still exists today. It's mainly from this bird that we believe the domestic chicken came to be, but we're not exactly sure where that domestication originated. It was likely somewhere in Southeast Asia, anywhere from seven to 10,000 years ago, but it's also thought that there may have been several locations of origination, which is really cool because it's like everybody had this awesome idea about chickens at the same time. <laughs> Regardless of exactly where and when it started, one thing we do know is we've been in this chicken game a long time. The original domestic chicken was smaller than your standard sized hens of today, but make no mistake, these little bitties had T-Rex ancestry. <laughs> Scary. Which you would know if you've ever seen a modern-day hen go after a lizard. <laughs> it's not pretty. This whole idea that chickens are these docile vegetarians, it's so not true. <laughs> in fact, I heard of a guy that actually put an entire deer carcass in his chicken coop, and they picked it clean in one day. It's for this reason that I advise people, do not somehow lose a finger in the chicken coop. You're never going to see it again. <laughs> and please, please don't get drunk and pass out in the chicken coop. <laughs> you do not want to go out like that. I like to say chickens, they look innocent, but there's flocks of vultures living in our backyards. So. Back to how all this started. The chicken was actually thought to be domesticated initially for fighting, which is sad. So I don't like to think about it like that. I like to think that one day, this very intelligent human being was walking through their village, just like this. <laughs> walking through their village, and they're like, they see a chicken, they're like, I would like to eat this feathered thing. But first, I would like to eat this round thing that comes out of its butt. <laughs> and so the symbiotic relationship between the human and the chicken was born. 
It probably didn't happen like that. <laughs> but what we do know is that our preferences and needs directed the evolution of the chicken. Chickens today are larger, they lay more eggs, and just so you know, those roasted chickens you get at the deli, those things are not normal. They're actually bred to live just a few weeks and grow these ginormous breasts so that we can put them on our salads. Humans really do have strange preferences and needs. And there's also no limit to the amount of religious responsibility that we will put on our animals, the chicken being no exception. <laughs> Chickens are actually considered sacred in many cultures, which you think would be a good thing, but it actually hasn't turned out all that well for them. Even today, in certain religious ceremonies, the chicken is used, and sometimes they come out alive, and sometimes they don't. But if that sounds strange or foreign to you, Consider the idea that we actually all do kind of believe that chickens are here to save us. And if that sounds strange to you, ask yourself what you wanted the last time you were sick. From chicken noodle to matzo ball to hot and sour soup, there's a curative chicken recipe in nearly every cuisine. So, this symbiotic relationship between humans and chickens kind of one-sided. But chickens still hang out with us. They still feed and entertain us from childhood on. Maybe this sounds familiar to you. And uh, feel free to clap and sing. <laughs> Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some chickens, E-I-E-I-O. With a bop, bop here and a bop, bop there. Here a buck, there a buck, everywhere a buck, buck. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> Isn't that comforting? I started thinking, you know, there's probably songs about chickens all over the world. So I did a little internet search, and I actually found the chicken song. It's from Syria. In times of poverty and conflict, the amazingly sustainable chicken is a godsend to us. They have this ability to create eggs and meat with very little overhead on our part. You see, even though chickens have been domesticated for millennia, they're still pretty darn self-sufficient. All that pecking and scratching, it serves a very important purpose. Chickens are always looking for food, and they almost always come home to roost, which makes it easy to keep them safe and nearby. I have chickens of various sizes, and sometimes I'll see my tiniest one asleep under the wing of a bigger one. It's heartwarming, really. <laughs> Chickens have this nifty built-in down coat, and they actually use their bodies to keep the flock warm as a unit. In their DNA is a knowledge that to survive as a species, they have to take care of each other, even in the coldest of nights. We could probably take a cue from them on that one. Because even though there's hundreds of different physical characteristics over all the different chicken breeds, they still almost always find a way to roost together. But I don't want to fool you into thinking chickens are always nice and sweet to each other. They're not. In fact, if a chicken spots weakness in the flock, they can be absolutely brutal. If they see the color red, they will peck it incessantly. Just think about what that could mean for a chicken that might be injured and possibly bleeding. Or what it could mean for you if you happen to stroll into the chicken coop with open-toed shoes and red toenail polish. <laughs> Let's just say chickens are 80% sweet and 20% savage. <laughs> kind of like us. 
But we humans, we love them. We love them, and a lot of us across the world, we try to take good care of them. When they're not being cared for, like most things, it usually has to do with greed. But there will always be those that care. We care not because of what we think we know about the chicken's nature, but because of what we desperately need to remain true in ours. You know, one thing I didn't know about chickens, and it was very surprising to me, is the peace I feel when I'm among my flock. I can be stressed out or worried about something, and I go out into my chicken yard, And magically, those feelings are lifted. And I'm not alone in this experience. There are so many people that I've met on this journey that can attest to this. And these are people that I thought I was so different from. We could be so different politically, socially, even spiritually. But we share the peace of chickens. People all over the world are experiencing this peace. Right now, there's somebody across the ocean, seemingly so far away, sitting among our common denominator, feeling peace. You see, we humans, we're really not so different. If people could just see that, maybe the world really could be saved. At the very least, I hope you never look at chickens the same. These ancient T. rex descendants have taken all that humanity can throw at them, and they're still a crucial part of our lives. They can be amazing caregivers and protectors of each other, and in their nature is a sometimes necessary brutality that we can seek to understand and try not to emulate. From what the chicken does and doesn't do, we can learn how to be more human. Basically, don't underestimate our feathered friends. And if someone calls you a chicken, (laughs) say thank you.